In this video, we'll take a look at how to ingest and query a new data set from scratch in your free trial instance. And the first step needed is to build a database. So let's do that. To start with, we need to add our schema, which is basically a list of our column names and their data types. So you're going to need to know these ahead of time. There is a few different ways to define a schema. So you can do this step by manually adding using the UI, importing from an existing database, or a third option, which I'm going to use, adding the schema as JSON code in the code view. And we're going to be following along with the finance industry tutorial data set for this course, which contains a price feed that's already been set up for us. And we also already have the schema in its JSON format pre-prepared. So let's grab that from the tutorial and copy and paste that to our code view. And you'll find this tutorial linked in the below notes. So now you should see that that's defined three tables trade, which we're going to use to store data from a real-time price feed, close, which is for a historical data file, and a table that is going to be used to store analytics. And that's going to be derived from the first two. But for the quick start, we're just going to focus on the trade table to start with. Now you can see we have all our column names and data types here, as well as a few extra features like attributes, table types, and sort settings. And we're going to go into why we've chosen each of these, what they mean, and how you can determine what your settings should be for your data set in the next module in the course. But for now, at a high level, just know that they're simply settings to determine how best to store your data. And the ones you're going to choose will depend on a mixture of factors like your expected data volume, structure, and the user query patterns. So we're going to give the database a name and select save and click deploy. So here we get a summary of resources that will be used and we're going to go ahead and deploy with those. The status button up here will tell you what stage the deployment is at and you can hover over it for more details. And when it shows us ready, that's it. Your database is ready to load data to. Next to ingest data, we're going to use pipelines. So let's add a new one now. And you can see we have a number of options on the left and we can use these in our pipeline. Now for this tutorial, the upstream data is a Kafka feed. So let's drag in that Kafka reader node and enter the broker name and topic. We also need to pass the authentication credentials for this feed. And we can do this in the advanced broker options section. And this is all detailed for you in the tutorial and you can get the four key value pairs that you're going to need to add, add those and select apply. Now, what I like to do is run a quick test deploy of this pipeline to see if we're getting incoming data. So let's hit quick test and then switch to the data preview tab to see what's happening. So very quickly, we can see we're getting some data and it's in a JSON format. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a decoder JSON node to transform it to KDB. We can leave this option here unchecked and select apply. Then I'm going to join these two nodes together and run quick test again. And now we can see something that looks more human readable and the data is now parsed into a KDB dictionary with column names and values for us. Now I want to transpose this to a table. So we have the columns on the top and the data records in the table rather than the other way around. And I'm going to use the function map node to do this. So dragging that in next, I'm going to stick in the keyword in list here which is a function in KDB that transforms a dictionary to a table. So effectively just pivoting it around. Now I've done a very simple transformation here, but just to point out, you can add any logic you want in here to transform your incoming data, like removing columns or rows, maybe adding or changing data. And you do have the option to do that either in Q or Python or even your own user defined functions. So we're going to join up the nodes and select apply. And then we're going to rerun the quick test again, because I like to see at each stage what's happening. And I can see now I have my incoming data how I want it. And this view below is just showing one record in the data feed. Next, I'm going to use the apply schema transform node. And I'm going to select our trade table from the equities database. And I'm going to leave the data format to any here. I'm going to join up that node and finally add our last one, which is a writer to the KDB insights database. And again, I'm going to select the equities database, the trade table, and leave the re rest of the settings to what the default is. Now I'm going to save this pipeline and deploy. And you probably notice that we've got some system notifications popping up. And these are really useful to tell you the health and status of your pipeline. And we can see we're getting one now, which says our pipeline is running. And you can see the full history of these by clicking on this icon. Okay, so now our pipeline is running. Our data is loaded. What's next? 
So let's query it and we can do that with the query tab. And we can see we have the option of using either a query builder, SQL or queue. And for now, I'm just going to use SQL to select some data back from my table. I do have to give it a variable name here and then select get data to retrieve it back. And now we can see we have data in our console below. We can view this data as a table. And also one of the coolest things, which I think is that we can switch it to a visual tab and see how this looks as a chart. So there's no effort at all here and this visual is automatically generated for us. So that's it for this quick start. In this video, we showed you how to ingest and query a new data set from scratch. We started by building a database, then we set up the data pipeline using Kafka, transforming the incoming J JSON data, and then writing that to our table. And then we had a look at demonstrating querying it very quickly, but we'll be looking at that in more detail in later videos and all the options that are available to you. So I hope you can see how quickly and efficiently we are able to go from nothing to having real-time streaming data being loaded to a KDB database. And try the end of module quiz to test your knowledge.